Is turn left a clever concept or an overused cliche? Hmm. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin, I'm a geek, you're watching Kevin the Geek. And if you missed my post on the community tab, or if you missed yesterday's review of Torchwood, the episode Adrift from Season 2, um, then uh, first of all, apologies for the kind of delay in getting the latest uh, reviews out for Doctor Who and for Torchwood. It's because on the day that I'm recording this, I am basically going to be going on stage i'm doing a production of greece locally it's opening night tonight and i basically worked my absolute backside off trying to get as much of my regular content out um and just kind of ready to the go so everything would still come out as planned however i simply ran out of time with all of the rehearsals all of uh, work and, and everything i was basically doing days where i was getting up at seven o'clock in the morning and not going to bed until 12 o'clock at night and literally not getting home at any point within those hours so yeah it, it's been a mammoth task so everything doctor and torchwood uh, related basically got postponed by a week as a result so my apologies to you there but today we are talking about the Doctor Light episode from Season 4, Turn Left. Now, if you again missed the video yesterday, just a quick up, up, update on, on how uh, this week and next week is going to go for my Doctor Who and Torchwood reviews. Yesterday was my review of Adrift from Torchwood. Today is Turn Left from Doctor Who. Tomorrow will be an extra one for Torchwood, which will be the kind of first bit of the two-part finale of series two which i consider them kind of separate entities in their own right so that will be fragments tomorrow then next tuesday it is going to be the final one of season two for torchwood which is exit wounds and then a week today on the wednesday it is my review of the season four finale the stolen earth and journeys end so if you aren't new to the channel please do subscribe to the channel turn on notifications all the usual stuff now, I'm asking this question. It's a what-if story used in this episode. What if Donna never met the Doctor? And this has been used um, either in singular episodes of different TV shows. It's been used in movies. It has also been used as more series as well for example the most notable one the marvel animated what if series it's one that luckily i never knew that this story was going to be a what if scenario at the time that this originally aired i just knew that this was a doctor light episode and my only reservations at the time was pretty much along the lines of, I hope it's done good. Because the track record to this point was mixed. Because we've had two official Doctor Light episodes in Doctor Who up to this point in Modern Who. Which was, um, of course, Love and Monsters, which is pretty much universally despised. And then you have... Uh, Blink, which is pretty much universally loved. So, uh, you know, it's very, very mixed with this regard. Now, the key difference with this one is, in all of those, it is not only a Doctor Light episode, it is also a companion light episode with both Love and Monsters and with Blink. Here, we are not so much doing a companion light, but only a Doctor Light one. And that enables us to get more time spent with Donna, which one of my commenters on the channel, Jack, has made it very clear in his opinion that Donna doesn't, uh, doesn't really get much proper time as a companion in this series. Um, it's a situation that when you do break it down, and I do agree with him to an extent, you have 
the three part um kind of storyline little saga where Martha comes back uh which is the two parts and time and episode followed by the doctor's daughter so that does take a little bit of the spotlight away from Donna and then of course the two part finale which comes up next you have Rose coming back, you've got Martha coming back, you've got Captain Jack, all of the Sorcerer team, you've got Luke in there from Sarah Jane, you've got so many different um, characters, uh, Mickey, um, Donna, uh, uh, Rose's mum, uh, Jackie, you know, all these characters all coming back. And so again, it, you've got kind of five episodes where Donna doesn't really get a lot. Oh, and then, of course, last episode with Midnight, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, that was an amazing episode. And if you missed my review of that, please do go back and check that one out. But Donna was hardly in that. So, yeah, if you do think about it, you basically got the first three episodes. Um, You've got the Agatha Christie one, the two library ones, and this one. So, basically... um, Oh, and maybe if you include the Runaway Bride. Okay, effectively... Donna gets eight episodes where she is pretty much front and centre. So, yeah, Donna does get done a little bit of a bum deal. I won't say that she gets quite as bum of a deal as Martha. I think Martha has been done quite dirty, and I've said that in a number of instances. But, yeah, Donna does get done a little bit dirty. But, yeah, she gets this episode to focus on her. And, my God, Catherine Tate smashes it out of the planet. Not just the ballpark, she smashes it out of the planet. Her performance in this is mesmerising, it's captivating. You have your eye on her. What does that mean? I don't know. Sort of thing the doctor would say. You liar! You told me I was special! But it's not me! It's this thing! I'm just a host! And the first, I don't know, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes or so, understandably so, we get the runaway bride, Martha. Uh, Donna, sorry. We get shouty Donna but once I think you get into the bit where basically the uh, the Titanic starship crashes into uh, London and destroys it um, that's where you see Donna really really come alive um, I will say on the Titanic thing there is a little bit of uh, plot inconsistencies, which is Russell T. Davis taking a bit of artistic licensing for, because they kind of mentioned in the Christmas episode, The Voyage of the Damned, it was pretty much going to destroy the planet. Whereas in this, it pretty much just destroyed London and irradiated southern England. A little bit inconsistent there, but I'm prepared to forgive it for the purposes of this story. It's an alternative universe. Maybe they can get away with it. But, yeah, my, the thing I'm going to come back to is the What If storyline. It has been used a lot. You can't deny that. And so, is it at a point that it's been overused, really? It's arguable to say, yes, it possibly is overused. But then again, you've got to ask the question, is there realistically any such thing as a truly original idea anymore. I would have to say, in my opinion, no. And it's a situation that leaves you in a situation that how can you create anything new and original? Like you had, um, I think it was either this year or last year, you had this whole thing where uh, Ed Sheeran, the musician, was getting taken to court and being sued for potential copyright over, you know, producing a song that was apparently thematically and musically very similar to um, another piece of music. I can't remember what it was. But that's essentially what Doctor Who is doing in, in this episode. You're using a generalised concept 
which has been done before. But you're doing it in a Doctor Who way. And my personal opinion on a what-if storyline, as long as the particular media that you're doing it in, so let's say Doctor Who as an example, as long as Doctor Who itself doesn't overdo that type of storyline, then I don't mind if they do it in Doctor Who and then they do it in a Star Wars themed one and then a Lost themed one or some random Apple TV show one or whatever. As long as you are using the general concept but you are doing a truly brilliant piece of storytelling and making the story that you're doing feel fresh and interesting and engaging, then personally, I don't really have a problem with it. And this episode really did do a great piece of drama. And yes, there were inconsistencies. Yes, there were some things that you're a bit like, that was a bit iffy there. Overall, I have to say this is a fantastic episode. And it's grim, this episode. It's really grim. And I kind of said earlier, I think it's almost like this was an episode, like, how, uh, what, what if Donna never met the Doctor? I think it's more done in, in a theme that what if the Doctor died? And then you're using Donna there as the crux. And you see how important the Doctor is in this story. Uh, well, not necessarily the story, the, this entire universe. And, you know, when you think about it, you break it down, all those, those things, oh my God, yeah, if, if the Doctor had actually died in that Christmas episode, then yeah, he wouldn't have been there for Ali Pose, he wouldn't have been there for the Santara and stuff, he wouldn't have been there for all these different um, kind of storylines that we've seen. And it does ponder that question. What happens if the Doctor is not there to save them? These are all things that are in flux, as the Doctor always says, you know, about fixed points in time. So it's done really, really well. But most importantly, it doesn't just focus on the, the events that we've already seen and what kind of changed there. You've seen the ramifications of it. And the biggest one has to come down to when the Titanic crashes into Buckingham Palace and destroys all of London. You know, the England basically becomes a refugee country. People there get moved up north to find anywhere that they can try to have an existence, to put it mildly. And... The scenes in the house with uh, Mr. Colasanto uh, and all the other families there, that is so dark. When you have that moment where um, they basically get taken off to effectively concentration camps, like it's wartime, that made me feel really uncomfortable to watch. Even just now re-watching it for probably, I don't know, like maybe the 20th time. You know, I've watched Series 4 probably more so than any other series. But even now, knowing what's going to happen, it just gets me. And maybe that's because you've got the addition of Wilf, who would have been uh, a, a World War veteran. So he, of course, would know of the horrors that that entailed. That scene was actually originally written for uh, Chipo Chungo, who, who played uh, Chanto in Utopia in season three. Obviously, she came back into this as the sort of fortune teller right at the side of the episode, the one who got the, uh, the, the Trickster's Brigade beetle onto Donna. But originally, the idea of Rusty Davis was to use her as a friend, and she would have been one of those ones that would have been carted off in the concert to these you know, labour camps, concentration camps, whatever you want to call them. And yeah, 
I think just that whole scene is just horrible. Nobody should ever have to be put in that. But unfortunately, you definitely know that there, if that genuinely happened in real life, there would be people within the country who would be very much of a mindset of this is England for the English. And anyone foreign, get rid of them. Send them back to their own countries. We don't want them here. You know, we've got enough problems. We need to cope with our own. And it's a horrible thing to think that some people would genuinely be like that. But unfortunately, we know that that would be the case. I think the one of the strongest things that this episode did, and it's one of the most subtlest things I think that this episode did as well, is with Donna's mum. Because it's always been kind of said and stated in a number of different episodes that Donna has a lot of self-esteem issues and self-doubt. And she doesn't think that she's important or special in any kind of way. And the Doctor is constantly battling to, to convince her, yes, you genuinely are brilliant. And he does it at the end of this episode. He tells her that, he's, that she's brilliant and she still doesn't believe it. I'm nothing special. Yes, you are. You're brilliant. I thought you were brilliant. But seeing Donna's mum whittle away at her in this episode, where she, like, says... To be honest, I've given up on you. That just, I think, is, is a scene that would be Donna's mum kind of enhanced because of the situation that they're in. But if she's like this in this moment, it does make you think how how many other times has she made like little snarky or snidey comments throughout Donna's life and probably chipped away at that self-esteem. And maybe is that why that Donna is the way that she is? Is she shouting at the world, you know, which is shouty Donna, because she's trying to get noticed. She's trying to be seen and in a way make people take notice and say, yeah, you are special, even though she doesn't really believe it. That's what I feel. And that's the context I take from that. I like the fact that they kind of wrote in the, the passing of uh, Donna's father in this episode, because it's documented that Donna's father was going to come back into this series, that he even filmed uh, the hillside scene, which was featured in uh, episode one, which um, eventually was going to have to be cut because he got so ill that um, I think he broke his leg, which was very important for, for this episode because they basically had so little budget when coming into this episode. They had to find money any way they could. And because they knew that he was ill, they took on a risk and he basically wasn't insured. So when they would have had to replace him, they would have had to find more money to film more scenes. Because he broke his leg, that was some of the like, mitigating circumstances that then paid to be able to reshoot the scenes that he had done. So they were quite lucky in that regard. So, yeah, I, I think it was a nice touch to kind of write his death in, into this scene so that you didn't necessarily have to do it at a later point. It was a nice touch, and I think it was handled quite well. So I'm going to wrap up my review now of this episode. I do think it's absolutely fantastic, but of course I have to score it. Now, if you are new to my series of Doctor Who reviews, first of all, please go back and check them all out. I've all done all of them from Rose all the way up until this point, and I'm going to continue doing them till we get to, well, up to date, basically. Um... But what I do is I score all of my Doctor Who episodes a score out of 100. And I do that by giving 10 categories a score out of 10. And that's what I feel is the fairest way to be able to fairly and accurately review and rank what I think are some of the best episodes. So, these are my scores for Turn Left.
And so that means that turn left has scored 82 marks out of 100, which means it's an A rated episode. Like I said, it's an episode that could be a little bit of a cliche, but I think the stuff that it did well, they did brilliantly. Donna and Catherine Tate's performance was a standout in this episode. I would have to say that Wilf was fantastic in this episode. Donna's mum was fantastic in this episode. Rose... Mm, she she was pretty good. You know, she was pretty good. But I've never been the biggest Rose fan. It was great to see her back. And it was a... It was a proper shock. I think to an extent. Although at the same time it wasn't. Because it would already been sort of teased throughout the series. That, that Rose was going to be coming back. But yeah. Overall. I think this is a very, very good episode. What are your thoughts about turn left whatever your thoughts are drop them in the comments down below and remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new next week we have got the season four finale of doctor who tomorrow and next tuesday we've got the season two finale of torchwood and then of course november we have got the 60th anniversary specials and i'm going to give you uh, a little tease into what I have planned. I have got a number of Doctor Who rankings planned. I will be reacting to two series or serials of classic Doctor Who, specifically from the first Doctor Zero. Um, so that will be something I will be reacting to. They are ones I've never seen. And so that's going to be really interesting. You get to see my first time reactions for that. And I will do reviews on those serials as well. Um, with Torchwood, I have decided with uh, Children of Earth and Miracle Day, I'm not going to do like an episode by episode one. I'm going to do one, maybe a, possibly a two-parter one for each of, of the two kind of series. Um, because it is one overall storyline, um, so rather than doing you know a weekly blow by blow, it'll be a, a bit more kind of encompass encompassing the whole entire storyline. But yeah, maybe I have to split it up into two parts with that. Um, so with the Doctor's, uh, the Fourth Doctor's kind of specials, um, I will be doing those. After that, I will be pausing my Doctor Who reviews until after the 60th anniversary specials and once that is over the way then I will continue on with series 5 and onwards with the Matt Smith era. But that's going to do it for my latest review of Doctor Who and Turn Left. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Kevin. I am a geek and you've been watching Kevin the Geek. Goodbye.